Matt Shirk, Matt, today in Rage Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. I'm glad to have you all here sending some love, some positive vibes your way, especially if you need it out there today. Oh, today, I have this whole thing that I want to start doing, uh, not a ton, but sprinkling in a bunch of videos on all rare and maybe some all epic teams as well. See if I can create the very best and kind of all around rare teams that can tackle some end game content in raid, right? So the first kind of task that I assigned to myself arbitrarily here, I am playing student and teacher in today's video. Let's take a roll here. Jay Quellen, where's Jay Quellen at? No Jay Quellen here? Do you mean Jacqueline? Ash, can you come up with a team, an all rare team, that can clear stage 25 with no changes, like no different, no swap ins and swap outs. Stage 25 of Ice Golem, stage 25 of Dragon's Lair, and stage 25 of Fire Knight's Castle. And I have done it. I have done it. Let's start with Dragon's Lair first, then we'll kind of go up. I'm not going to show you all the all the waves of this stuff, but this is the squad, and I freaking love all these all these champions, right? Let me actually burn some energy here because I'm lazy, uh, just so I can show you the builds really quickly. And also, let me know if you want me to deep dive into any of these rares in particular. Uh, they're in endgame gear, to be very clear. They're in good gear, right? They're not the best gear in the world, but definitely not bad either, right, on any of these. Uh, but playing around with this team, this team of hard hitters, like not necessarily hard hitters, but like heavy hitters. These are the these are the, 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 the S tier rares, in my opinion, right? Gnarlhorn, Bellower, Coltar, Relic Tender, and Tree Shield Knot. Those are my faves. Those are my faves of the faves. You guys make me sick to my stomachs, fam. Really quick on the builds. And again, let me know in the comments if you want me to take a deep dive. I would love to do a long spotlight on especially, especially Tree Shield and Bellower of all people. Bellower. Bellower, like an age old rare who there's plenty of videos on him out there. But I think. Bellower's way better than I've ever given him credit for. Like he really is. And I'd love to make a video just talking about that, but I don't want to I don't want to ruin our lineup here and have him hog all the airtime. Tree Shield, I think he's I don't think I I know he's the best reviver. He's the best rare reviver because he can revive two allies on one ability, okay? Two allies, sign me up. That's amazing for a rare. He's the only rare that has that ability. He also brings a heal and an increased defense on a 3 turn cooldown. Granted, the weak version, but increased defense nonetheless. So instead of Tree Shield not originally i had thought that maybe i should put marked in this spot and maybe i should i still should but i don't have her all built out so maybe tbd unmarked in this position but it's really nice to have two revivers so i have them in a and i have them in a bolster set and an immortal set okay on tree shield knot so i have as much hp as i possibly can on him uh he's at 82k hp 217 speed here's his masteries really quickly all right let's go to and we have uh indomitable spirit as a blessing we have relic tender we have phantom touch on relic tender for uh fire knight right uh and then we have pretty basic pve build in terms of masteries i didn't change anything here uh the big priority on relic tender is going to be survivability and speed right uh, i built a little bit of resistant on her as well 362 it helps me resist some stuff especially on wave content anyway 279 speed 68k over 3000 on the defense i have her in a life in a righteous and in a frostbite because i wanted to be cheeky i want to be a little cheeky here i love frostbite i've said that a billion times on the channel i think it's the most underrated two-piece set in the game right especially in the arena but it's fun in pve too cold tart i actually kept her in the build that i had her in for fire knight hard 10 uh which is a fast and not crazy nuker build right a tanky for a cold heart, 51k, 3,000, fast, enough accuracy, and a t not a ton of crit rate, crit damage, but this is a build that I love. I use this cold heart everywhere, right? Bellower. Oh, let me just show you Masteries, my bad. Uh, Masteries, ooh, ooh. Why do I have Iron Skin on, on Cold Heart? Well, I didn't redo her masteries. Clearly, I was trying to keep her alive longer for Fire Knight Hard 10. Uh, I probably would not go with this loadout in particular, but it, it still gets the job done. So we're going to go with it, right? Uh, we do have Phantom Touch, obviously, on uh, Cold Heart as well. And, well, you guys already saw the rest of the stats. Uh, Bellower! Oh, Bellower's so good! You really do have a death wish, don't you? Perception, Cruel, Immortal. I want a little bit of everything, guys. A little bit of everything. Perception, because I need a lot of accuracy because he's the king of debuffers in the game cruel because i want a little bit of damage because he deals good damage for a rare and immortal because i need him tanky 
Uh, pretty pretty obvious, right? Why I went with all those two-piece sets. I also wanted my Bellower nice and fast. 264, shy, a little shy out of 100% on the crit rate, but it's okay. Uh, some survivability, a little bit squishy compared to the rest, but he's going to be okay. We have two revivers on the team, right? Which we need uh, for some of these dungeons. 431 on the accuracy, okay? So fast Bellower. I love me some Bellower, dude. It's weird because in this video, or preparing for this video, I should say, I really, again, I, I'm going to stop drooling over him in a moment here, but block active skills, helpful on wave content. Decreased speed, helpful everywhere. You guys know how much I love decreased speed. It's my favorite debuff in the game. I'm not saying this is the best, but it's so much more essential, I feel like, than people give it credit for. Even at 15%, it's very, very, very good. Uh, and then we have decreased attack and decreased defense. Are you kidding me? He's got everything, man. I know it's a small versions, but he has damage on top of that. You could put easily, easily put him in a stun set. I could give him fearsome presence. There's so many different ways to build this dude. It's 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 glorious. I love this dude. And then Narlhorn is our lockdown controller of the team, right? Uh, that's why we don't have Bellerhorn in a stun set because we have this beast with an AOE provoke. It's a placing, so you can't weak hit it. You know, he's placing provoke. He's got unkillable on himself. I have indomitable spirit as well on him. Uh, a chance of blocking all of the CC debuffs, basically, right? So, like, I think it's a really solid one. I have eagle eye on him as well, just to get that uh, accuracy up to where it needs to be, over 400. And then I have a lot of speed on him as well, and a lot of survivability. So that's the squad, guys. Let's go in. Let's super raid it. I am not going to show you the waves. Well, I guess I'll show you a little bit of the waves, right? Let's talk about who you would... I, at first... I used Long Sword Turox, the new rare. I used him on the team, uh, but then I and I used Gear Grinder as well. Okay, uh, instead of Coltart and Tree Shield, not I had those two originally, and we couldn't clear level 25 of uh, Ice Golem or of Fire Knight with those two. So I swapped these two in, and well, they get the job done. Now I want to issue you guys a challenge. Exam. Oh. Do you think you can pull this off? Stage 25 of all three of these dungeons with any rares on your account? Or do you even have a team that you're really, really proud of? I would love to do some community contests this year. I'm not gonna issue it in this video, but I will get my ideas from this video. But I would love to start giving you guys, I don't know, maybe like a 10, $100 rewards for the most creative rare teams or something like that. I think that could be really fun. And it'd be awesome for me for content too, because I could share that content on the channel. Like I'm sure it'd be interesting to see what you guys, you know, the hundred, 200,000 of you can come up with, you know, that would be really fun. At least to me, let me know if you like the idea. You can already see this team is putting in work. Nobody's even dying right now. Uh, all the deaths really come in Ice Golem <laughs> against Klysis or whatever. Klysis? Klysis? Whatever. Uh, and against uh, uh, the Fire Knight, right? So uh, I'll come back to you guys when we get to the Dragon. I think this might be the longest run of the three for whatever reason. Uh, the mobs, I mean, they're level 350. They have a ton of HP and we have all rares. Uh, so I'll be right back when we get to the Dragon. Here we are against the Dragon. So obviously Coldheart putting work in here. Uh, not just with the uh, the heart seeker, obviously, but also with the uh, the poisons, right? That she's bringing to the table here. We have uh, good old Bellower doing his thing, getting all those debuffs on there. The whole team is pretty dang tanky too, so they can hit, they can take a hit for sure. Again, <clears throat> we'll do Ice Golem next. Uh, and I'll just bring, I'll just cut from Dragon after we see the stats page, uh, and we'll go right to you know fighting uh, the the Ice Golem, then fighting the Fire Knight too. Uh, but dang man, <laughs> this is fun at least for me. It's kind of this kind of content is really fun. Now other other ways I can take this series is we can use more obscure rares as well, right? Like new rares, whatever, and we can tackle different content. It doesn't need to be just uh, you know stage twenty five. Now these teams, to be clear, on some stages they can clear hard dungeons, right? So they can stay. I, I did Ice Golem hard four, and we cleared it, but not with a one hundred percent success rate. So I figured I'd stick with what I know these teams can clear one hundred percent. Maybe just to give you guys some inspiration on some awesome uh, champions that maybe you don't fully appreciate or maybe that you have in your vault and you're like, you know what, I could probably use that that sort of a, a skill set. Again, we have the healing from Relicree. We didn't even talk about Relicree at all. Dude, she's so good, man. 
She's a reviver with a full cleanse and a continuous heal. We just saw it right there on a three turn cooldown. Man, I mean, a cleanse on a three turn cooldown with a continuous heal, that's so good. Not even epics have a cleanse that strong, you know? It's, it, she's really, I think in my last rare ranking video, I think I really underranked Reliquary. I think I put her like, I don't know, around the 10 spot, I wanna say, but shame on me. Shame on me. You know that she deserves it, they all do. Heartseeker goes off right there. Let's end this. There you go, Bellower. He ends it, so we did it in six minutes and 31 seconds, not bad. Bellower with 2.3 million damage, Coltart with 3.7 million, and then uh, a lot of healing from Tree Shield, not uh, Reliquary obviously helping out in all her ways as well. Let's move on to ice golem here guys all right guys here we go against the ice golem himself so this is a dangerous run this dude hits very hard very hard so as i mentioned i actually had uh originally I had my man Gear Grinder, the Ogryn Rare Void Affinity. He's a reviver and he has a heal. But I needed that small version of increased defense. That was a game changer for me. And again, uh, to kind of double down on the point we already made with Bellower, the weak versions of decreased attack of decreased defense, of decreased speed, all three of those debuffs, I mean, they're so incredibly valuable. They're, I mean, it's 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 hard to overstate, if you don't have them, how important it is even to have that small version. Because think of it this way, I have, what, 3,000 defense? Keep in mind, these buffs, they go off your total defense after all your artifacts, your blessings, whatever you have, right? So, uh, unlike auras that just go off your base stats, you know, like improved 19% uh, speed would be off every single uh, champion's base speed however a buff increase speed unlike an aura that goes on their total speed after all of their artifacts masteries whatever you know so the same thing for increased defense for example from tree shield not that's why having that increased defense which you can see on all my champions right now i mean that hit that comes through they're gaining from around a thousand extra defense with that weak version buff on them right now. This team might have just wiped right there, right? Especially handling critical hits from bosses, a 15% crit rate. If he comes through with a crit and we don't have increased defense, we could get smoked, you know? So with Gear Grinder, even though he's also a very competent reviver, uh, it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough. Uh, my team was wiping without that increased defense, the weak version. So it goes to show you guys, again, how valuable that is. And look at Relic Tender, man. Just coming in there, just cleansing everything away, healing everybody up, topping everybody off before we have to deal with the next uh, big hard hit from the Ice Golem. And it's going to be kind of the same boat when we get to the uh, the Fire Knight as well. I love these champions, man. They're really, uh, they're really, they're really good. Newsflash. Dude, it feels like she's doing that cleanse in the continuous heal like every move, doesn't it? She has no reflex set on or anything like that either. She just, uh, she's fast, you know? She gets back around to that ability quickly. I really wish Heartseeker or Coltart was using the Heartseeker against the Ice Golem instead of the minions, but we have it on auto here. We're at a whopping eight minutes into this run, so it's not the fastest speed run. I'm sure I could sacrifice a little bit of consistency with getting a faster all rare team in any of these areas, but I like the consistency, right? I don't like throwing away my energy. So we lose uh, a couple champions, we lose a couple more, but that's why we have two revivers on the team, right? That's crucial. Both of our revivers stay up, and they're able to pick up Bellower and pick up Coldheart, our DPS, and our uh, our debuffers, right? So, doing a good job here so far, but you guys know how this Ice Golem is. As things keep going, he hits really freaking hard. We have the next, not this ability, but the next one on Tree Shield. He's going to be able to buff everybody up with the increased defense. We should be able to put up with this next big AoE nuke and hopefully see ourselves through here to victory before we go on to the Fire Knight. Now, as I, I showed you guys earlier, as I told you guys earlier, uh, we have a few, ch a couple champions at least on this team with Phantom Touch, which is going to be crucial for getting that shield down on the Fire Knight. But more on that in a moment here. Let's stick with this team here. I'm going to come back to you guys at the end of this run. 
I'm gonna keep this video moving here. Keep your attention. The third act is almost upon us. So let's see how we do towards the uh, home stretch. Be right back. All right, guys. So we're looking really good here. Uh, a few big hits came in, but we're dealing with them well. We've uh, reoriented, like Coltart is now targeting the Ice Golem because of his HP as well. So it should be one more Heart Seeker away. And there it is. Boom. Coltart putting out 4.1 million damage. Bellower, 5.2 million damage. And obviously a lot of heals coming in from Tree Shield and Relic Tender. Guys, let's move into Ice Golem stage 25. Excuse me, Fire Knight stage 25. Stay tuned. All right, guys. So here we go to the Fire Knight. It is time. Uh, so Fire Knight 25, and again, this team just gets the job done. Uh, uh, obviously, the uh, the Phantom Touch Cold Heart going in there and doing the heavy lifting, right? Uh, but I really love. It reminds me of how manageable the old school Fire Knight is. Fire Knight Hard is, I mean. He's the most challenging dungeon in the game, I feel like, right? Uh, or, or how would you rank? How would you guys rank Fire Knight Hard as it relates to Sand Devil, like the highest stages of Sand Devil in Phantom Shogun's Grove? I'm curious where you guys would kind of tier those three dungeons out in terms of difficulty, right? I... Uh, I think, like, like with everything in this game, it depends on who you have, right? If you're lucky enough to have been playing a long time and you have a ninja, you got a god seeker, maybe Sand Devil's a breeze. You don't, maybe it's a challenge, right? So, uh, whereas Fire Knight, I feel like it's pretty challenging pretty much for uh, for everybody. Unless you're just a, uh, you know, a super endgame Kraken, right? Uh, anyway, we're doing pretty well here. I, I gotta say, I remember it being a little bit rockier in my pre-run here. But, I mean, Cold Heart, again, just doing what Cold Heart does, right? Really, truly legendary in disguise in Cold Heart. We're making pretty quick work of it. Obviously, the Fire Knight himself. It took us, what, six minutes to actually get to the Fire Knight. There's that. Uh, but we're doing a pretty good job. We get that shield chipped away really, really quick. It's so much easier than whatever the heck it is now, 25 or something, 30. I don't know how many ticks it has, the new version or the the, the hard 10 version. Either way, though, uh, this team, man, what do you guys think I can do here to this fivesome, right? How can I improve? Uh, I was thinking the next episode, what we could probably do is I could either come up with an improvement, maybe a rare team that can handle like hard five dungeons, all three, uh, or... We could potentially do an all rare platinum PVP team. You know, uh, I have some ideas on what I could do there too. Obviously, it's going to necessitate having one like an apothecary or somebody like that super, super fast, right? To speed boost the rest of the team. I mean, I think that's going to be the way to go, right? Uh, it may be getting a bolster champion on there as well. And then, you know, I don't want to ruin the entire team. So I'll let you guys let me know if you want to see that video. And we'll definitely make it happen because, frankly, I enjoy the all rare content here. Uh, so Fire Knight goes down. And yeah, Cold Heart with the finishing blow there. Bellower, Cold Heart, of course, as you've become accustomed to here. Handling the lead in terms of the damage. And look at Tree Shield, man. I mean, 1.7 million in heals, dude. That's big time there. Uh, plus Reliquary's, uh, you know, cleanses along the way. Guys, there it is. My all-rare super team. They're superheroes. They're five of my favorite, most strong, versatile, all-around rares in the game. Let me know what substitutions you would make and what you want to see next in this series. Much love, and as always, take care, guys.